This is uh, part two of my uh, video series about ins installing and uh, configuring a PFSense, uh, a PFSense network on a network that simulates a real-world network but using virtual machines. So right now um, what I noticed is that... There we go. Um, so for the network... So this is um, so we need to simulate a, a WAN network, wide area network, and LAN network, local area network on our on our uh, our system with two separate network adapters. So what I need to do is use NAT for this because then it'll use NAT to to access the internet on, on, on the WAN network. But I also need to go in here, enable the network adapter here, set it to NAT network, and set the name to NAT network 2. Um, because, as I said, uh, here, preferences, I had, uh, I had, I defined NAT network 2 as, uh, it uses 192.168.1.0 WAC24, and it doesn't support DHCP. So, uh, since it doesn't support DHCP, PFSense will um, support DHCP. Um, so it did it that way. That so that's so I, I need that instead of NAT network, uh, which has a, a different network uh, CIDR. And also supports DHCP. We don't want that to happen because we want we want PFSense to provide all the DHCP functionality in uh, in 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 this. So I have a general system. Uh, again, it's, it has a two gigs of, of RAM. Should be adequate. Um, Sixty the Storage drive is um, 16 gigabytes, which I think will be ad adequate. Um, so all, all this should be okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, PFSense PFSense 2.7 demo. So I'm gonna start normal start. Um, so it should try to find a startup DVD. Um, so I need to select that here. I'm gonna select add and select the PF Sense. I think this is it. It's PF Sense uh, CE 2.7.0 release. Uh, has AMD uh, 64 dot ISO. I'll select that, and I'll choose that. Select start. So, um, so now is is booting. This is uh. The equivalent of booting in uh, a DV a DVD. Um, so here we have a we've reached the PFSense installer. Um, it's going to we need to accept the copyright and distribution notice. So let's accept. So here we have a, uh, we have different options here. Install PFSense. We also have um, launch a shell for rescue operations, um, and recover config. XML, and you can do this to uh, 
you can export a config.xml from from uh, um, a previous configuration and if it crashes then you can you can do a recover config.xml and uh, you can at least re recover what you, you know uh, anything you did after that will be lost but you can you can at least recover the config.xml from uh, using that um, but we're going to uh, use a uh, install how would you like to partition your disk uh, guided root on ZFS um, manual disk um, so I'm just gonna go with a guided root on uh, guided root on uh, ZFS um, so it has like different uh, options here. Um, we can select inst install and proceed with an installation. So I'll do that. Um, so there's, op there's different options here. Um, stripe, no redundancy. Uh, mirrored and and uh, way mirroring. Um, there's RAID one point one point zero, which is a two um, two way mirrors. Um, so I think like that's RAID zero is just a stripe with no redundancy. RAID one has is has a mirror has a mirror drive. RAID five has a uh, is uh, has a parity stripe. Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, so I only configured like one drive for this. I'm going to do stri stripe with no redundancy. Um, so let's see. It has it, um, virtual box hard disk. So I'm going to select this. Um, Last chance, are you sure you want to destroy the current contents of the following disks? Well, I think it really doesn't have anything, so I'm just going to select yes. Um, and extracting distribution files, which is good. Installation of PFSense complete. Would you like to reboot into the installed system now? Um, I suppose so. Um, Select reboot. We just uh, power off the machine. So now I get to go into here settings. Um, okay, so it has the the PF Sense uh, DVD here as an ISO. ISO. So I'm just going to delete this. Um, so now we should be able to go into like the the demo that I installed onto the hard drive. Here, so I'm just gonna do normal start. So now it's booting. So, configuring LAN interface done. Configuring WAN interface to be close to being done. Starting DNS resolver. Should take a while. Done. Bootstrapping clock. Done. 
starting web configuring done, configuring firewall done, boot up complete. So now you see it has as the the WAN is set up and is set up to be DCP. So it received a an address ten point zero point two point fifteen WAC twenty four. And it has a, a, a LAN configuration, which is a 192.168.1.1 WAC24. Um, so, let me see. It's going to go and do a configure, um, set interface IP address. And go to um, available interfaces. I'll, I'll select two. Configure. IP before uh, LAN address via DCP. No, we don't want that. So we just want to select a, select it manually, not dynamically. Uh, enter the new LAN LAN IP before interface. Uh, IP before address rather. Um, we'll do one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. Enter the new LAN IP before subnet bit count. Um, so it's 24. Um, for when enter the new IP before LAN IP before uh, upstream gateway address for LAN press enter for none. Let's configure IPv6 address LAN interface via DCV6. Well, we don't really need that, so I'm just going to select no. Um, enter the new LAN IPv6 address, enter for none. Um, press, uh, do you want to enable the DCP server on LAN? So I'll select yes. Enter the start address of the IPv4 client address range. So select a 192.168.1.100. Um, enter the end address. Well, we'll just like 192.168.1.200. Um, do you want to revert to H HTTP as the web configuration protocol? Well, I'll, I'll do that because otherwise it's going to be uh, it's going to be HTTPS and it's going to warn me it, because it's, uh, it's not it's, doesn't have a, a valid uh, uh, certificate, so that's probably going to be a problem. So I'm just going to select yes. Um, You can now access the web configuration by opening the following URL in your web browser. And it says 192.168.1.1. Um, so now I've set up the LAN IP address. And I set up DHCP. Um, so now I should be able to go into... Uh, go into uh, our uh, Linux Mint and and uh, configure configure the rest of, rest of this via the web interface um, so let me see something here um, ping host um, 7 google.com It worked. I see something else. One six eight dot one dot one, which is, and it worked. So let me just do something here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna halt the system. Um, type in why, and so PF sense will shut down and. Halt now, so I'm just go in and uh, power up Linux Mint. So I'm just gonna go in, do a normal start. So now you can, well, we should be able to see what happens when, when you boot Linux Linux Mint, 
Actually, let's, let's just uh, do this here. Um, power off the machine. I want to show what what this is like. So we have like, I had I I installed Linux Mint as a virtual machine, and so it has a a four gigabytes of RAM, which you think is adequate. Storage has. Um, 20 gigabytes of, 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 uh, disk space should be adequate. And network, so we have net, it's, this is a, I had, I clicked on enable network adapter, so we have net, net network number two. So it's the same, same network as the LAN network on, on, uh, on the P, on PF Sense. So what should happen now is you should, you should, Power it up and should not re um, it should not be on the network. It should not be on the internet. So I'll just uh, power it up. And so it should take a while for it to boot up. Oh, so so what I want to do is I, I I'll I'll select terminal here. I'll type in if config, and you can see there's no it, it hasn't received an, the LAN the the network interface has not received um, an IP address. And uh, let me see, uh, I two dot one six eight dot one dot one should network is unreachable, and uh, so therefore Google.com should not be reachable. Name or service not known. So I'm going to power up uh, PFSense two point seven demo, and uh, that should change. gonna take a while for for it to happen um so let's let just uh, launch Firefox just so we can have this Um, so it says disconnected, so I may have to go in and, and uh, configure. Oh, connection established. So I didn't even have to configure it. So let's, so let's see. So now I should go in here. Do I have config and uh, DACP is configured with with INET it was a uh, 192.168.1.100 which is the first uh, DCP address we we uh, configured so that's good so let me see if it can it can it ping uh, PF sense box yes it can uh, can it ping Google Yes, it can. So now I'm going to go in. I'm going to uh, let's, let's see if we can if we can access uh, PF Sense. Oh wait, yeah, HTTPS. That's not good. Let's do HTTP. Try again. Oh, maybe if I. Oh here, H. Oh, 
Oh, it's ATTP, ATPS. Let's try something else. Let me do the set, set interface IP address. This is 192.168.1.1.24. Yes. 192.168.1.1.100. One and so I'm going to do 192.168.1.200. Um, oh, my bad. 192.168.1.200. There's a, there's a comma there. Um, So let's see, I should be able to access this by clicking on HTTP colon, oh here, yes, we're in, okay, so let's try this, oh actually, this is not good because I wanted to do, um, I want to, I want to do uh, dis display a little bit different here um, so I don't know let's try 10 12 a by 1024. It's not yeah I think that's it may it might need, need to be like more than that um, preferences display apply that's good okay so now we have it, it's running full screen here. So I'm gonna type in admin, and this the default password is pfsense. Sign in, and don't save because we're probably gonna change this. And it says, welcome to pfsense software. This wizard will provide guidance through the initial configuration of pfsense. The wizard may be stopped at any time by clicking the logo on top, the top of the screen. And click next. Um, this is a, a promo for NetGate Global support. Just gonna click next. Um, so, so, let's see. Um, so it has a primary DNS server. Um, secondary DNS server, so I'm going to type in, uh, let's see, the Google server is like, is 8, 8.8.8.8, um, so we're going to do secondary DNS server is um, going to be 1.1.1.1. And I got this. I'm gonna uh, deselect the override DNS. Um, please enter a name, time, and uh, date and time zones. pfsense.pool.ntp.org. 
on the screen, the wider network is information should be configured. Um, so this is MAC address spoofing, DCB client configuration. I think we're, I'm just going to leave this. Um, is a this is a I think this is the this configure WAN interface. So uh, I'll leave this as, as default block. Block private net networks from entering WAN. Block non-internet routed networks from entering uh, via WAN. Um, so configure LAN interface. We'll keep that as it was. Um, set admin web GUI p password. So we'll type in the secret, super secret password. Um, save password for, um, H, uh, for 192.168.1, I think I'll save this, um, click reroll to reload PFSense's new changes, reload is now in progress, Pre please wait, the wizard will redirect to the next step, congratulations, PFSense is now configured, um, so I'll click on finish. So I'm gonna click on accept. Um, so this shows how pretty much this is a dashboard. So it shows how um, uh, this version is a 2.7.0 release. Um, so this is on the latest version. AMD Ryzen uh, seven. Well, this is the this is the processor that I have. Andy Ryzen 7 3700 eight core processor, A AES NI CPU crypto. So that's kind of important. This uh, they were, they were um, as far as I know they were considering making that a requirement, you know, hardware requirement. Uh, but it says that the uh, that uh, is detected that it has an A AES NI CPU. Uh, uh, s um and uh let's see oh, let's see q qat crypto no um so there's a whole bunch of information here um so you can see like basically out of the box you can you can basically connect to the internet um so it's kind of we, we have no firewall rules uh, no uh, NAT port forwarding, but we can connect to the internet. So, you know, basically, um, you can connect to the internet, like, basically, out of the box. We, we've only spent, like, a half hour configuring it, and we can already uh, can configure things. So, basically, we, we've we set up our, our, uh, our virtual network, our, our, well, we've, uh, We've uh, set up our virtual machines to uh, to uh, simulate a real world network, and you can see like out of the box, we um, our network is pretty much good to go. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, here like you can see is you can connect to the internet. Can connect locally. Uh, so the only thing left to do now is to maybe is to see what what's available in uh, PFSense two point seven point zero. Um, let's see. Uh, still IP IPsec uh, 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 layer two um, tunneling protocol and open VPN. So we're gonna look into that. Uh, so anyway, this uh, this is pretty much it for this video. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and again, if you found this video of some use to you, then consider subscribing 
this YouTube channel. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video.